Hey friends, Corey here. Today we're taking an in-depth look at all the storm attacks, all the lightning quake zap attacks that are taking over Clash of Clans. In fact, they've already taken over. Let's be perfectly honest. I'm going to show you all three of these bad boys. I'm going to show you how to get it done with them, what you're going to, what kind of value you're going to need, good ideas, tips, tricks along the way. Also guys, towards the end, I've got some absolutely perfect examples of how to get the most value out of your zap quakes how to get the most value out of your hero suies and then the types of bases to look for on these because some of these bases you can get creative and just and just make it work other bases are absolutely begging for you to zap quake them so we're going to cover all that in this video and more first of all zap dragon now this one right here while i was blabbing on there he was already getting his value inside here he decided that clan castle was going to be good enough value for him in there and basically Basically, the reason for that, Clan Castle doesn't always matter for dragons. Dragons can kill him. A lot of stuff, hounds, ice golems aren't even going to come out, obviously. But he's going to suey his heroes all the way into here and into here. So that would have pulled out the whole CC. Could have really slowed his dragons and screwed up the attack. So with the king coming in from the bottom and the queen coming in from the top, he also had a few electro dragons in this one, which aren't always a good choice. But if you can get good chain value, they can really help your funnel. Dude, look at this. Look at this. He funneled this whole side. He funneled this whole side that's with heroes electro dragons just combined funneled all that stuff ended up taking out not just the clan cast in the middle but sweepers as well sweepers are big time value on dragon attacks and look at that perfectly timed grand warden ability that was tanking eagle shots that was tanking scatter shots it also kept the blimp invincible so the blimp would make it to the town hall now he didn't save his Grand Warden ability for the Town Hall. That can hurt you if all your troops congregate there. But if you got a blimp going towards it that's able to take it out all by itself, really the only thing is in here eating that blast is going to be two dragons and some loons. The rest of your army is over here safely away from that Town Hall blast. And that's why he didn't have to save that Grand Warden ability from there. All right. And that Town Hall blast is also the reason when you're sending that blimp in to kill it, why you're not using all loons. Because none of those loons are going to survive that Town Hall blast. But if you bring one dragon with five loons, the raged up five loons can take that town hall down really fast and then that dragon will still survive the blast with most of its health intact to help on the back side of the base whereas if you're using nine loons inside that stone slammer every single one of those is going to die when that town hall blast comes on and then on this one he saves his royal champion for the backside he waited until his dragons were tanking a bunch of those backside defenses and because he waited for that tanking royal champion is going to survive the whole raid royal champion is also going to be finishing off the last few defenses for for this triple also in this video i'm going to show you guys which ones of these attacks are stronger than the others and honestly that first one we showed with the dragons was probably the least strong of these three different variations of zap attacks next up we got mass hog riders look at this troop composition he's got 17 super goblins and we're about to see why right over here first of all zap value he got the cc he got a scatter shot down are you freaking kidding me got an expo in there as well but cc and scatter shot that is massive value now if you're going to be using hogs obviously things like sweepers and air defenses do not matter at all but one thing that matters even more is going to be those enemy heroes because the king queen and enemy royal champion will all go to town on your hog rider so you got to take out that queen you're really going to want to have a plan for that royal champion as well but honestly your best bet is having a plan for all three of those heroes now on a base like this i mean he's got most of these heroes king and queen all on the outside of the base along with the town hall we saw him really sneakily taking out that exterior town hall with sneaky goblins which was beautiful then he's gonna sue his heroes over here to get both of those heroes taken out now he's only got one hero left in this base all right enemy royal champion right here look in that troop composition he's got two headhunters if you send them in there naked they're gonna die way before they get to the royal champion but if you send them in there behind the hog riders the hog riders are gonna be tanking for those headhunters the entire way the headhunters can go in safely behind the hogs and they're gonna duck in there let's watch these little headhunters as they're moving in straight for the enemy royal champion grand ward ability is gonna keep them invincible for a couple of those blasts and they're able to finish off that enemy royal champion guys at this point we got town hall down we got we had one of the scatter shots down cc down before even starting all the heroes are down at this point now it's just up to this massive pack of hog riders with two heals and a grand warden ability last heal going down right there to take out the rest of this base man this is a really good example of the kind of value that you're gonna want to get if you're thinking about using those mass hog riders because guys on these ones you have to get some good pathing for those hoggies you got to get some good pathing to make those two heal spells count and uh time that grand warden ability appropriately but 
get that CC down, get those enemy heroes down, as many as possible. The queen is an absolute must in there. And then you can really start to find some creative solutions to bases using these mass hog riders. And Alex just annihilated this one. By the way, guys, big shout out to War Whales and Alex for having me over once again to check out these awesome replays. Guys, I do appreciate it. Next up, we got mass hog riders. We're gonna take a look once more. You're gonna notice, because this base is a lot different. That last base gave us so much on one side. He was able to sui for both the heroes. He was able to take out the town hall early. That's not always going to be the case, man. He knows he's got to get the queen and the CC. He sees the eagle close to the CC, so he zap quakes that area. We already got the queen down. We already got the CC down, which are both musts with this mass hog rider attack. Getting the eagle down, that's also a huge high value target. Now, you don't have to get it down per se, but it is a very high value target. So if you can get it at the same time, more power to you. You're going to have even greater chance of success with this attack. Now, we do still have two royals on the backside. We've also got two scatter shots and a town hall left. All right, with those two royals, that's going to be a little too much damage for those hog riders to handle. And now, if we look, how's our pathing? We got to have that pathing be successful with hog riders too. I mean, if we could start on one of these sides, over here that's a nice thin path but it really widens out to this massive massive path over here so if we're going to want to have success we got to narrow down this super wide path narrow it down into a more manageable area for those hog riders to take care of now look at this siege barracks placement right over here ice golem in front can help keep the pekkas alive a little bit longer because he really needs to take out this enemy royal champion and if he can also get in here and take out this scatter shot in this compartment that's going to accomplish two major things takes down another the royal which is a big deal on hog attacks also going to cut in narrow that path a little bit more remember good pathing is one of those musts that we got to have for mass hog rider attacks too and if he's able to get out this scatter shot right here while narrowing this path quite a bit then boom we've just taken out another major obstacle to our hog attack now guys look at this he's got nice clear pathing into the town hall you gotta have that if you haven't taken it down with your suey but look at this we do have one royal left on the back side but guys if you're going to end on a hero that's much better than starting or hitting him in the middle of the attack because he's not going to have that much of a chance to chase your hogs and damage hogs before they can finish off the rest of the defenses in the base oh dude he's in trouble he used his grand warden ability at a good time but those hogs were stuck inside a tornado trap so they eat that grand warden ability luckily they're full health so it does not kill them all he's able to get another his last heal spell down get them healed back up to full health but man when they got trapped in that tornado and they could not reach that town hall while that grand warden ability was already popped that was a very critical point in the attack man and I, i'm guessing that had nova a little bit nervous on this one look at this man we got this king still up but as soon as those defenses go down now hog riders can turn around and deal with him oh he's still got two defenses over here i dude i totally didn't even see that he's gonna triple this base without ever dealing with that king now i did say i was gonna talk about which ones of these are stronger and i did mention that dragons that we started with were kind of the least strong out of these three attack strategies now the last two that i just showed with the mass hog riders is definitely gonna be number two out of these three attacks in strength you can just get a lot more creative uh find a lot more solutions with those a lot of times dragons it comes down to pathing man pathing 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 uh and and other than that man if you can get creative with with taking out those objectives you can have more success you're going to find more opportunities to three star with mass hogs than i think you will with dragons but guys that's going to bring us up to uh our, our last example of these three and that's zap lalo guys and i think it's pretty dang clear at this point that zap lalo is the strongest of these three attack strategies and i've got three examples to show you and make sure you hold in for the next two because our very next one i'm going to show you uh, a great example of how to get the most possible value out of your zaps and quakes and the most possible value out of your hero suey because getting good value out of those things is really going to set you up for whether or not you're going to be able to three star these bases or not and then for the very end i'm going to show you a base that was absolutely begging for the zap quake attack strategy check this out man alex is suing in for this town hall that's a big time value all right you don't have to get it down as part of lalo but it is big time value if you can he also ended up taking out a uh, expo took out a sweeper took out that clan castle with the zap portion of this now look man he's still got a queen in here um and she's deadly to loons she is so you gotta have a solution for her if you can't suey for her. he's also got two scatter shots left up in here all right so check this out man he's got this blimp he's 
he's bringing in the blimp he's trying to pop it right on top of the queen in there he's got the loons and dragons he's gonna ask those dragons to kill that enemy royal champion for him uh, which, or excuse me, kill that queen. And that queen obviously went down right away. Dragons are also really handy at tanking scatter shots. Look at this, man. This scatter shot is firing off on this dragon, leaving several group saloons on either side completely untouched by that scatter shot. And honestly, guys, we see that a lot on Lalo attacks when you bring dragons inside of a blimp or dragons inside of a stone slammer. Dragons are really good at tanking that scatter shot. They tend to to separate from the loons since they're not only going for defenses and once that scatter shot locks onto them it really saves your loons on the back side of the base like we just saw there so beautiful job alex breaking down that base for the zap lalo all right guys check this base out this is going to be an example of getting massive as much value as possible out of your zap quakes and your heroes look at this man this town hall is not touching much. It's not, or excuse me, the CC is not near the Eagle. It's not near a scatter shot. It is close to sweepers, but they're on opposite sides. So let's see how he's going to break up these lightning spells to get the most value possible in the center of this base. First of all, he's going to start off over on this side, just dropping two lightning spells. All right. And that's going to take down that sweeper. It's going to damage the CC. And he angled them in a way that they're going to start doing damage to the single target Inferno as well. He's going to do the same on the other side, taking down the other sweeper and then drops the remaining lightning spells in between the clan castle and the single now with the earthquake he's gonna start actually damaging the scatter shot archer tower and the other single while doing that last little bit of damage to that clan castle so by breaking up those lightning spell spells and spreading them around a lot of times you can get some different objectives on either side of the clan castle now check out this suey man he's got an ice golem and a super wall breaker he really wants his queen to go in here and take out this eagle artillery then he drops his king up here he's gonna work his way down and be able to hopefully kill this enemy archer queen but while the queen and the king are working on either side he drops the royal champion in between and look at this because king and queen are tanking either side this royal champion is still un touched all right it had some excellent tanking working for it on either side so the royal champion's able to sneak in there and royal champion's ultimate objective is actually taking out this scatter shot which never would have happened if he didn't have his other two heroes on either side tanking for the royal champion that royal champion still has her ability intact because of that she's gonna be able to take out that scatter shot pops the ability boom goes the scatter shot and look at how much value he got out of suing those heroes man he got a scatter shot he got a ton of funneling down he got the enemy queen kill he got the eagle artillery down look at the path that is left throughout this base nice narrow path of defenses He's got the blimp going straight in for the town hall. Looks like he's got a rage that he's going to be using for that blimp. Make sure that town hall goes down. Now, if if it takes it out in time, he could have saved his Grand Ward ability for a little bit later, but he's got too many loons in range, so he's going to go ahead and use his Grand Ward ability right there. Make sure those loons all survive that town hall blast. Now, look, we got this, this hound coming in if this air defense comes down this hound can pull across and tank a few of those scatter shot shots oh it's on the loons oh it was stuck on the loons instead of the hound so he has to drop the freeze on the scatter shot that's all right man that's why you have those freeze spells a lot of times if i'm doing a zap lalo at town hall 13 man i'm i'm waiting for that good scatter shot value before i'm using those freezes a lot of time because man freezing that scatter shot can save I mean, just a massive group of loons from death. And guys, look how many loons he's got left over. He's still got two loons in his pocket. He can drop those to help with cleanup or just swag them if he wants to because this base just got annihilated by Zap Lalo, the strongest of the new storm attacks. All right, guys. Now, if you've ever seen a base that was perfect for Zap Lalo, man, this is it. Look at this. Clan Castle, both sweepers, Eagle Artillery. You can drop all those lightnings right in the middle. Drop that Quake on right in the middle as well. You're going to get the CC. You're going to get both of the sweepers, and you're going to get the Eagle Artillery with the Zap. Now, let's look at this, man. He's got a scatter shot and Queen out at the edge of the corner of this base. Yes. All right. This is a no-brainer. You see something like this, you're absolutely going to be suing this section to take down that Queen, uh, which is super high value on these Zap Lalo attacks, and also take out another scatter shot, which again, super high value on these zap lalo attacks i mean let's be honest guys no matter what attack you're doing doesn't even matter scatter shot is always going to be massive value all right those things when you add those two together man they're by far the most valuable defenses on the board if you're taking them singularly could argue the town hall uh maybe a little bit more valuable 
yeah, yeah, I'd say so, man. It gives you that other star, which is super essential in things like CWL and, of course, Wars as well. But also, guys, it does a ton of damage on that death damage. Uh, but the deal with the Scattershot is, man, the Scattershot can damage an infinite number of loons as long as they're close enough together. The Town Hall can damage an infinite number if they're within range of its blast. That's why it's difficult to tell which one of those bad boys has more value. Let's just go with they're both super high value. The scatter shot, or excuse me, uh, the stone slammer, which I always mix up with the scatter shot, uh, is gonna be going in, taking out that town hall, and it's actually gonna be be able to activate it just by dropping next to it it's going to do enough splash damage that it wakes up that town hall so even if he hadn't been at that 50 percent damage mark that scatter shot and the battle blimp are really good at activating the town hall with the drop damage that they do in the area that way you don't have a situation where your town hall hasn't been activated your loons all skip past it and you end up with a high percent one star fail which we've seen which affected the world championships last year so you got to keep an eye on the town hall with these attacks if you're taking it out too early and the Lalo, what do you have that's going to activate that town hall? Because, man, you really don't want to end up in a situation where your loons bypass the town hall because it hasn't been activated yet. Guys, these new attacks are super fun and they're super strong. They've already taken over Clash of Clans. I'm loving using them. Let me know in the comments below which one of these three is your favorite, Hogs, Dragons, or the Lalo. Friends, in the middle of your screen, there's a button. Click that button if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, and that's going to subscribe you right now. If you're already a subscriber, check out the other video on the screen, and we'll keep hanging out.